land. He went to the local feed and livestock store, and he talked to the proprietor about how he was going to take up chicken farming. He asked to buy a hundred chicks. That's a lot of chicks, said the proprietor. He said, I mean business, the city slicker replied. A week later, the man was back again. I need another hundred chicks, he said. He says, boy, you sure are serious about this chicken farming. Yeah, the guy replied, if I can iron out a few problems, the proprietor said, problems? Yeah, he said, uh, he said, I think I planted the last batch too close together. <laughs> if you're going to plant chicks, you've got to leave some space in between them. So he's going to plant another hundred chicks and see what happens. Luke chapter 5, 12 to 16 says this. While Jesus was in one of the towns, a man came along who was covered with leprosy. When he saw Jesus, he fell with his face to the ground and begged him, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. Verse 13, Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. Then Jesus ordered him, don't tell anyone, but go. Show yourself to the priest and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Verse 15, then the news about him spread all the more so that crowds of people came to hear him and to be healed of their sicknesses. But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Dear Lord, this morning it's our privilege to sit here, to listen to your word, to have you implanted by the power of your Holy Spirit into our souls and our hearts and our minds. And we thank you for that, Lord, and we invite you to ride this word into our hearts and to guide it to where you want it to go and to cause it to the, have the effect that you want it to have. In Jesus' name, amen. There was no hope for this man. In those times, leprosy was incurable. It was a death sentence. Lepers couldn't associate with anyone but other lepers. And it says he was covered. This man was covered with leprosy. He must have been affected by it for a long time, many years, to be covered with it at this point. And he declared his faith. He said, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. He declared his faith. And he knew that Jesus could heal him. He believed. But he was unsure whether he would. He knew he could, but he was unsure whether he would because he said, if you will. So Jesus reached out his hand and Jesus said, I am willing. I am willing. Jesus is always willing to heal us. He's always willing. And Jesus gave him an order. He said, be clean. Observe that leprosy was a horrible disease. Now it's curable with antibiotics. I read that there are 180,000 people with leprosy in the world today, which considering how many people are in the world, that's not very many anymore. But in ancient times, leprosy was thought to be highly contagious. Actually, you need to have repeated contact with droplets from the nose or the mouth of the infected person. So the incubation period was, it can be anywhere from five to 20 years from the time you're in that contact until you show leprosy. The inflicted person was separated from the community no one wanted to contact a leper except other lepers. 
leprosy primarily affects the skin and the nerves outside of the brain and spinal cord called peripheral nerves. It may also strike the eyes and the thin tissue lining inside of the nose. The main symptom of leprosy is disfiguring skin sores, lumps or bumps that do not go away after several weeks or months. The skin sores are pale colored. The nerve damage can lead to loss of feeling in the arms and legs, muscle weakness. It usually takes about five, three to five years for symptoms to appear after coming into contact with the leprosy causing bacteria. Some people do not develop symptoms until 20 years later. The time between contact with the bacteria and the appearance of symptoms is called the incubation period. Leprosy's long incubation period makes it very difficult for doctors to determine when and where a person with leprosy got infected. But this man is said to be covered here with, lip, with leprosy. I've seen pictures of people with leprosy and the ends of their fingers are gone down to the fist, down to the hand. Their noses are gone sometimes. And part of the reason that their fingers go away is because there's no feeling. And so they get infected by touching something hot and don't know it. And they get infected and it deteriorates. No, in their toes and their, and their fingers and sometimes even their nose is gone. It's a horrible disease. But this man is said to be covered with leprosy. Being covered with leprosy represents our pollution by sin. We are consumed by that leprosy, the leprosy of sin. When you're in sin, you're consumed by it. It covers us completely and there is no cleanness in us anywhere. We are most vile. There is no good in us before salvation. Psalm 53, starting with verse 2, God looks down from heaven on all mankind to see if there are any who understand, any who seek God. Everyone has turned away. All have become corrupt. There's no one who does good, not even one. And Romans 3, 10, 23, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All have sinned. Sin makes us odious to God. He can't have the contamination of our sin in his pure home in heaven. He loves us anyway, but he, in his holiness, cannot have our sin in his purity. Except for repentance, God doesn't even hear the prayer of the sinner. John 9, 31, we know that God does not listen to sinners. He listens to the godly person who does his will. So except for the, uh, the prayer, when you come to, to God in, in humility and and ask him to be Lord and Savior, he doesn't hear the prayer of the sinner except for repentance. In, this, in the sense of our spiritual leprosy, first of all, we need to seek Jesus. He's the only person who can heal us from the sickness of sin. No one could accomplish what Jesus did on the cross. No one could do that. No one else ever lived a perfect, sinless life, unblemished by sin, an offering acceptable to God. No one else could pay the penalty for my sin when I was in that state. Secondly, we need to humble ourselves before him as the leper did. The leper felt shame from his diseases, from his disease. And we need to feel remorse for our transgressions. We have offended God. 
We have caused Jesus to suffer. We are undone before God. We have no dignity before God. We have no value except that he loves us. But our righteousness is as filthy rags. We can't take our righteousness or our good and wonderful deeds that we do to God and say, here, this ought to earn me something. We can't. It doesn't earn us anything. He expects us to do that. The only righteousness is the righteousness of Christ imputed to us on the cross uh, at the time of our salvation. That's the only righteousness that impresses God. He is worthy, Jesus. We are not. 2 Corinthians 5.21, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Number three, we must eat earnestly and urgently desire to be cleansed from all unrighteousness. Our unrighteousness has rendered us unfit for communion with God. Our sin has driven a wedge of separation between us and God, just as leprosy drove a wedge of separation between the leper and his family or his community. Number four, we must believe in the complete ability of Christ to set us free from the law of sin and death. His sacrifice is completely sufficient. No offer on our part can bring atonement. Jesus paid it all. Everything is paid. Nothing that we can do can, can bargain uh, with God. We should come to him with urgency, as this leper did. He came with his face to the ground in complete humility. Our cleansing is a mercy with pl worth pleading for. Our cleansing is a mercy worth worshiping and praising God for. Number six, we must understand that he is willing. I am willing, he said, be clean. Because he came to seek and save the lost. Luke 19, 10, for the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. When we are lost in the leprosy of sin, our sin, there's no one else to turn to. But he is always willing. The problem is that the sinner sometimes is not willing. Only when the Holy Spirit removes the veil that covers the heart of the unbeliever does that wonderful thing happen called salvation. What is required from those who are healed? Number one, we must receive the cleansing with humility. There is nothing we have done to acquire this merciful benefit. The unmerited favor of God is our salvation. We don't deserve it. We get it anyway because of God's love and his mercy and his grace. Don't tell anyone, Jesus said. There can be no boasting for our salvation. We are to tell of it. We are not to tell of it for our own honor. Look at me, I'm saved now. We're not to tell of it that way. We are to tell of it for the honor and glory of God. I keep forgetting to push my buttons here. <laughs> we ought to have grateful hearts. Our salvation came at an awful price. The price was willingly paid. He said, I'm willing. All we have to do is receive it. John 1, 12. Is there anything else in life that compares to the mercy of God? Anything, anything. We need to have an attitude of gratitude. And we should put that gratitude 
on display when we come together and worship him. Amen. John 1, 12, to as many as received him, even to those that believed on his name, he gave the power to become children of God. Number three, our healing from the sickness of sin has allowed us to approach him. Before salvation, just as the disease of leprosy separated the leper from society, sin leprosy created a great chasm between the sinner and and God now that we have been redeemed we are able and we are bid to have communication directly with God salvation establishes communion with God that which separated us from God is now cast into the sea of his forgetfulness he, he's always there to hear us Psalm 34, 15, the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their cry. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18, rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Number four, we are to carry the gospel. God expects us to spread his word to everyone in the world mark 16 15 he said to them go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation and then down to verse 20 then the disciples went out and preached everywhere and the lord worked with them and confirmed his word with the signs that accompanied it we live in a dark world satan is the god of this world Satan's goal is to destroy the work of God in us and to destroy our effectiveness in bringing the light of the gospel into dark places and darkness in people's lives is dispelled by the beautiful holy light of the gospel. People live in spiritual darkness because Satan and his agents are doing the best they can to keep the truth from people lest they see and repent lest they come to repentance lest they, be, they become disciples and bring the light of the truth into dark places in the lives of sinners lest the sinners turn from their ways step into the gospel light and get set free from the law of sin and death that's the kind of world we live in a world of contention between darkness and light, between God and Satan, between good and evil. Evil is rearing its ugly head. Just watch the news. But don't dwell on it. Dwell on the goodness of God. But John 1 says, I'm just going to read the 14 verses of it. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though he, the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and, and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who became the Father, full of grace and truth. The leper was desperate for healing, for cleansing, 
He was desperate for restored fellowship with his family and his friends in the community and not to be shunned anymore. We are desperate for restored fellowship with God and for the healing uh, from the sickness of sin. Jesus wasn't afraid to touch the leper. Those days, nobody would touch that leper except another leper. Jesus was, does not withhold his touch from us sinners. Jesus was willing to make the leper clean and is willing to make us sinners clean. 1 John 1, 5 to 10. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you, God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word is not in us. We are most blessed. I'm preaching to the choir today. We are blessed because we're born again believers. I know all of you, and I know that you're born again believers. If there was some in here that I knew not to be that way, I would go and have a conversation with you, <laughs> as I did with Layla and Layla's mom. The Holy Spirit guides the word. I spoke the word, and they got saved. It's an awesome thing. But I know all of you, and I know you're all born-again believers. So we have come from darkness into his glorious light. We have experienced the greatest healing that can ever happen. We have made, been made clean from the leprosy of sin. Sin had a hold on us, every one of us. And we've been set free. We've been healed. Jesus was willing. He touched us by his grace and the power of his Holy Spirit and the truth of his word brought light to spell the darkness in our lives and we emerge from that darkness into his holy light. We get saved. We got set free from the law of sin and death and healed from the leprosy of sin. Amen. Praise God. Well, I'm going to um, invite you to come forward now. We're going to have communion. I think I can turn.